I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Welcome everyone to the Ernest Angley Hour. I'm Reverend Chris Mockamer, and my message for you today is the power of divine faith. The Bible says to every person is given a measure of faith, and in this message I will take you into the scriptures to reveal to you the power that's in your measure of divine faith. But first, we have some good music and singing. The hallelujahs keep that fire burning. Keep that fire burning, get your ticket home. Keep that fire burning, burning in your soul. Keep that fire burning, fire won't go home. Live a holy and righteous life where there is no sin and strife. Keep that fire burning, get your ticket home. The fire of the Holy Ghost will burn inside your soul. Just lift your hands and raise His name and let Him have control. When His Spirit comes to you, just let Him have His way. The fire of the Holy Ghost will fill you as you pray. Yeah. Keep the fire burning, burning burn in, in your soul. In your soul. Keep the fire burning, fire won't go on. Live a holy a righteous life where there is no sin and strife. Keep the fire burning. It's your ticket home. Flying away, all the saints here say, Hallelujah today. It's 
Jesus come It'll be the final day The battle has been won I'll have a mansion there That's so, so bright and fair It's a beautiful day I'll be flying away to heaven someday Tonight's sermon is The Power of Divine Faith. And I really want you to focus on two key things in this sermon. The power that's in divine faith and every person is given a measure of divine faith. So what opportunities abound by these two facts according to the Word of God? And I want to take you to open this sermon in James chapter 5, verse 15. Take note of the power of divine faith. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of divine faith brings healing to the body and forgiveness of sins to the soul. And how is this made possible? Through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross at Calvary. His sacrifice of divine blood was a twofold atonement. And when faith is in operation, this powerful blood sacrifice goes to work. I want to take you to the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. He prophesied of this twofold atonement before it happened. Speaking of Jesus, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. God the Father laid upon Jesus the sins of the human race. And then later, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and 25, Peter writes this after the fact, after the sacrifice that Jesus made, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice the difference in the writing now. After the sacrifice is made, ye were healed. It's been paid for. The healing is yours. It's there to be had. It just requires faith and operation, divine faith. He went on, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. By the power of Jesus' divine blood, humanity can receive salvation for the soul and healing for the body. However, to receive the great power and benefits of this divine blood sacrifice, divine faith in operation is required. Because it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says that without faith it's impossible to please God. Divine faith must be in operation if anyone is to please God. Therefore, to remedy this, God has provided every person a measure of divine faith so that if they desire, 
they can come to Calvary and receive mighty benefits of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. It tells us in Romans 12, 3, God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And he speaks of divine faith. God is not going to pour out human faith. God is going to give and deal with people measures of divine faith, his faith. Now, it's important to note that a person does not need divine love working within to come to Calvary, but they must have divine faith working. For 2,000 years since Jesus came, many people have come to Calvary who were sinful and degraded. They possessed no divine love in their life, yet they wanted a change. They wanted to be set free. They wanted that brand new life that comes through the divine blood sacrifice of Jesus. And so it was by divine faith, such individuals made their way to Calvary, yielding to and believing in Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again, a spiritual rebirth. That's what it means to be born again. Made brand new on the inside. By divine blood, people are made new creatures in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It is when a person becomes new on the inside that they receive measures of divine love. Divine love for God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Divine love for everybody. Saints and sinners, divine love even for your enemies. So how does a sinner's measure of faith go into operation that they may receive these benefits at Calvary? What ignites this measure to lead them to Calvary? Hearing the word of God and believing. Jesus said in Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. There it is. A person's measure of divine faith will operate when they hear the word of God and then choose to believe upon the word of God. They that believe, when they hear the word, shall be saved. They that believe not, shall be damned. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 tells us, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This is what ignites within a person their measure of divine faith, when they come in contact with the word of God. And this is why Jesus commanded, His gospel is to be preached to every creature in the world. People must hear the word of God. People must see the word of God in action through our lives, through testimonies given, through miracles and healings. People must have the opportunity to believe throughout the world. There are many people with an honest heart, but they sit in darkness. They sit and live in the darkness of sin and ignorance. Many people in other nations, they sit in the darkness of false religions and false doctrines. But when many of them hear the word of God, or they see the word of God demonstrated in the life of a child of God, that light of truth from the Word or from a child of God's life or from witnessing a miracle or healing, that light of truth can penetrate their darkness and ignite their measure of divine faith within. 
that will lead them to salvation when they choose to believe. Speaking of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus was the word of God made flesh who lived and dwelled among humanity. He was a great light of truth. Jesus lived the word of God. He preached and taught the word of God. He demonstrated the power of God's word with miracles and healings. And many who were sitting in darkness saw that great light, and they believed upon him. During his ministry, that divine blood in Jesus would operate, causing many fantastic signs and wonders, miracles and healings. It's recorded in the, in the Gospels, Jesus walked the water. He multiplied a few loaves and fishes to feed thousands of people. He calmed the angry seas and the wind. He de delivered devil-possessed people, raised the dead to life again. And it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, such great power at work. And here it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Jesus healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases, but he did not heal all manner of people because not everyone was willing to believe upon Jesus. Not everyone was willing to let that measure of divine faith go into operation. For example, in the sixth chapter of Mark, here Jesus passes through his hometown of Nazareth. However, he was severely limited in what he could do for the people there. Think of it, Jesus, the Son of God, was limited. Mark 6, verses 5 and 6, And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Doubt, fear, unbelief ties the hands of God. The great God of this universe who created everything at his word. And yet, by not letting that measure of divine faith in you operate, you tie God's hands. And he is unable to perform that which he has promised to perform. During his ministry, Jesus demonstrated great power and a willingness to use that power to benefit Everyone, everyone who would believe upon him. Let's look at Jesus' ministry in the Gospels to examine how people's measure of divine faith worked in order to receive from Jesus. Mark chapter 2. Now here is an example of what James spoke of in the opening scripture the power of divine faith to save and to heal. On a certain day, Jesus was in a home filled with people. And certain men came, the Bible says, and with them they carried a man upon a bed who was sick of the palsy. This house was full of people. Undeterred, they took the man on his bed, climbed up the roof, tore the roof off the house, and laid the man down before Jesus. Mark chapter 2, verse 5. Take note. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Jesus, by faith, in action, blessed his soul and then proceeded to minister to his body. Mark chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And I say unto thee, Arise, 
and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he rose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they, all, they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Then, in the fifth chapter of Luke, here is a man with leprosy. He presents himself before Jesus. And this leper, his divine faith, spoke up. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. No doubt this leper had heard testimonies of others receiving their miracle through Jesus. So his faith was up there. The leper knew Jesus could heal him. The question for the leper was, was it God's will for him to be healed? So Jesus made the will of God very clear to the leper in Luke 5, 13. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. As Jesus would minister to people throughout the Gospels, time and again he would ask the question in John 5, 6, Wilt thou be made whole? He would ask them. Jesus knew he could make them whole. But the responsibility was upon the person. The responsibility of what? The responsibility of that measure of divine faith be in operation. That would ignite the power of Jesus' blood and the miracle and the healing would take place. Jesus possessed the power to deliver a person of anything that afflicted them. However, the person had to believe. Divine faith had to be in operation for the person to receive. In the fifth chapter of Mark, a man named Jairus seeks out Jesus for him to come to his home because his daughter was nigh unto death. And as they made their way through a great crowd of people thronging Jesus towards Jairus' house, the Bible says that there was a certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. By divine faith, this woman decided, when I get to Jesus and I touch his garment, I will be made whole. So, she pressed her way through the crowd. Divine faith in action. It's not always easy when your faith is in operation. Many times for that measure of faith to work requires great effort on your part. She pressed her way through the crowd. She touched Jesus' garment, and the miracle took place. That affliction of 12 years was gone. Now Jesus, he was unaware of this woman. He had no knowledge of this woman, who she was, or her condition. The only thing that notified Jesus of this woman was healing virtue flowed from him. And he knew it. Well, when the woman confessed to Jesus what she did, Jesus replied, Mark 5, 34, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy measure of divine faith hath made thee whole. After Jesus spoke to the woman, suddenly a messenger appears from Jairus' house. Trouble the master no more, your daughter's dead. Jesus replied to Jairus, Fear not, be not afraid, only believe. Only believe. In other words, Jairus, it's time for your measure of faith, divine faith, to be in operation. Only believe. And when they arrived at Jairus' house, there were a group of mourners weeping. And Jesus said, Why weep? The damsel's not dead, but sleepeth. A test. Did they have faith or not? They all laughed and mocked Jesus to scorn. These mourners did not believe Jesus had the power to raise her from the dead. So 
Jesus put them all out. He wanted nothing to do with their doubt and unbelief. Then Jesus turned to the girl and raised her from the dead as if he was waking her from sleep. Friend, I hope this message on the power of divine faith is blessing you today. So many answers to prayer are dependent on our measure of faith in operation. Well, I want to take a moment to invite you to join us in this Jesus ministry in helping take this gospel to the world. Our motto has always been win the lost at any cost. And when you tithe and give love offerings to this Jesus ministry, the Lord will bless you. Not only financially, he'll bless you beyond spiritually, physically, and what a great reward in heaven you will have for helping to win souls for the Lord. And you partners of this Jesus ministry, I want to encourage you to read the July letter Follow Thou Me. This is a special message to encourage your heart. Friends, stand by. Help us to win more souls. You can donate through our website at earnestangely.org, or you can send in your support by mail. You, we have a Canada address for you Canadians, as well as a U.S. address. But when you stand by, we appreciate it, and I know the Lord will bless you for it. And friend, don't forget about the July edition of the Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. Look to Jesus first, a wonderful message that will bless your soul. Also, you'll read testimonies of how God is moving, helping and blessing people through this ministry in different places here in the United States and other countries around the world. And friend, if you're not on the mailing list, I want to encourage you to call in and we will put you on the mailing list. We will send it to you free. Or you can just simply go to ernestangely.org and read the edition online. And remember, each month that you sponsor this worldwide outreach ministry, you get a new Book of the Month. These are wonderful sermons by Reverend Angley in booklet form. And the Jul July giant little book is Mountains, Mountains, and More Mountains. This message can really help you navigate through this journey in life, filled with scripture from the Word of God. So, when you send in your support for the month of July, request offer P370. And now we have for you more music and singing coming up. First, it's the Cathedral Trio with a beautiful song, He Died for Me. Savior, he's my best friend, and he suffered the burdens and sickness of men. There in the garden of Gethsemane, the tears and the blood flowed just for me. He died for me. sacrifice and it brought me the victory pierced in his side oh as the son of god chose to die oh thank god for my savior the blessed redeemer my Jesus, he died for me. I have a Savior who is perfect and pure, born of a virgin. Of this I am sure Hung high on 
on a cross He chose not to flee But the choice that he made Was to die just for me He died for me Jesus, he died for me Oh, his blood and his body was the holy sacrifice and it brought me the victory pierced in his side oh as the son of god chose to die oh thank god for my savior the blessed redeemer my Jesus, he died for me. Jesus died, died for me. He was betrayed by Judas and cursed with a kiss. His trial at night, so it was. Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. With his last breath, Jesus prayed for the lost, even when they mocked him, and his blood flowed down that cross, even with his last breath. Suffering Christ, he prayed for me. Well, I'm just a man on a cross next to him. I lied and I stole a life full of sin. I deserve this old cross and the blood that came forth. But what Jesus do to deserve this abuse? Just before I got saved, Jesus prayed. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. With his last breath, Jesus prayed for the lost, even when they mocked. last breath, the suffering Christ, he prayed for me. Jesus forgave, just look to him. Don't hold ill will and resentment. Be like Jesus and use a blood on them. Then you can pray. Father, forgive them. Jesus 
prayed for the lost, even when they mocked hell, and his blood flowed down that cross, even with his last breath, the suffering Christ, he prayed for me, even with his last breath, the suffering Christ, he prayed for me. Oh, that's a beautiful song by Zion. The suffering Christ, he paid that price for our salvation, our healing and deliverance. Now taking you back into the cathedral for more of this message on the power of divine faith. And friend, at the end, I will be praying for you for salvation, for healing and deliverance. So let your measure of faith go into operation to receive from the Lord. In Matthew chapter 9, it is recorded, two blind men cried out to Jesus in divine faith. Matthew chapter 9, verses 28 and 29. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, again, is that measure of faith going to be working or not? Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now, this is Jesus who had all power. But he was limited by a lack of faith. Or he was free to do whatever needed to be done by their faith in operation. According to their measures of divine faith, those two blind men received their sight. Now, it tells us in Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. And any word, any in ET, ETH means to continue. That power is there. It's made available whenever needed. But learn a lesson here from the word of God. Never forget your benefits. Never forget to thank the Lord and bless him for what he does for you. And this lesson can be found in Luke chapter 17, because here we read of 10 lepers who meet Jesus at a distance, requesting mercy from him. And Jesus delivered all 10 of their leprosy. That disease was gone. And as these 10 men went their way, the Bible says only one man returned. He came back to Jesus, fell on his face to thank him and worship him. And Jesus lamented, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And looking upon that one who gave thanks, Jesus said in Luke 17, 19, Arise, go thy way, Thy faith hath made thee whole. By remembering to praise the Lord and give God thanks, this man was not only cleansed of leprosy, but his body was also restored. The parts of his body that were eaten up by that awful disease were made whole. The man was made whole. Friend, the power of divine faith is great. Enabling a person to receive from the Lord, not only for themselves, but for others who are in need. Friends, loved ones who are in need. Take note of what the Bible says. And I give you an example of this in the 15th chapter of Matthew. Here, a Syro-Phoenician woman cries out to Jesus, not for herself, but on behalf of her daughter, who was at home grievously vexed by a devil, devil-possessed. Now Jesus is going to test this woman's measure of divine faith. Will it operate or will it not? 
And he declared unto her that she was not of the household of Israel, and that the children's bread should not be cast to dogs. However, the woman's faith was divine, and it was undeterred. And with that divine faith in operation, she humbled herself before the Lord and said, Yea, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Her faith passed the test and brought deliverance to her daughter at home. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This story in the Bible not only reveals that your measure of divine faith can work to help bring blessings and benefits for others, but it also reveals in this story that it is the will of God for his children to receive healing and deliverance. Because Jesus referred to healing from heaven as the children's bread. The children's bread. Bread is common part of a person's diet. Bread is not unique or extraordinary like, say, a dessert. No. Healing from heaven is to be an ordinary part of a child of God's spiritual diet. Now, Let's go to Mark chapter 9 to examine the opposite end of the spectrum, how a lack of divine faith in operation can hinder a deliverance from taking place. Here in this chapter, a man brings his son who is possessed to Jesus' disciples. He's not looking for himself, he's looking for his son. But the disciples could not help him. Jesus, looking upon this scene, he replies in Mark 9, 19. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Now when the boy's father brought him unto Jesus, he said, Lord, if you canst do anything, have compassion, have mercy. But immediately Jesus rebuked his doubt. Mark 9, 23, Jesus saith unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Well, the father, he did the right thing. He confessed his doubt, and then he professed his faith in God. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. But so many people, they don't want to humble themselves and confess their doubt. Instead, they try to cover it up with human faith. But they don't want to confess that doubt. Oh, no, not to the Lord, not to anyone, many times not to even themselves. And then they wonder why and how they cannot receive from the Lord. Divine faith in operation does mighty powerful things. At this point, Jesus, he went into action and he delivered that boy. Friend, if you are in need of deliverance for yourself, for a loved one, never fear, never doubt. Your divine faith must be in operation if you are to receive from the Lord. Only believe, Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to those who let their measure of divine faith operate. So when you encounter troubles, sickness, problems, when needs present themselves in your life, in any form or fashion, don't look at your problems or your sickness or your need. The Bible says, look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. If you are troubled with doubt, fear, or unbelief about any trial or problem that you have in life, just do as the boy's father. 
Humble yourself before the Lord. Confess it before the Lord. And then declare your faith in Him. Get your spiritual vision refocused on Jesus, His divine blood, and the Word of God. When Jesus walked the earth and He met people with divine faith in operation, He marveled at them. He comforted them. And He brought blessings and deliverance to them. But when He encountered doubt, fear, and unbelief, He rebuked. He lamented over it because His mighty hands were tied by their unbelief. Today, Jesus no longer walks the earth in a body of flesh. However, we have His written Word. We have the Word that reveals the will of God. We have the Word and the stories in the Word that demonstrate the power of divine faith. We have the promises of God in the Word, promises for salvation, healing, deliverance, all needs supplied. And remember, as the book of Romans states, to every person is given a measure of faith. And when that measure is in operation, mountains in your life can be removed. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 21, verses 21 and 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Friend, the just shall live by faith in this final hour. In order for the mountains in their life to be removed, for themselves and for others. And I do not speak of mountains of dirt and stone, mountains of sickness and disease, mountains of demonic powers, mountains of bondages, spiritual, physical, and financial, mountains of opposition that is against the will of God being carried out. The just shall live by divine faith in order to be a shining light in this midnight hour that the world may see their good works and glorify their Father in heaven. The just shall live by faith. Friend, are you ready to receive from the Lord tonight in this service? Is your measure of divine faith now operating after hearing the Word of God? You who have a need in your life, by listening to the Word of God tonight, these testimonies, these examples, Surely you realize the power in the measure of divine faith that you possess. And Jesus said, only believe. All things are possible to him that believeth, not with human faith, divine faith, that measure of divine faith. And you who are watching tonight, if there's any sin, any disobedience in your life, Friend, know that the power in the blood of Jesus was spilled for the forgiveness of your sins. At Calvary, the Word says Jesus bore all your transgressions and sins. God the Father laid them all upon Jesus when He died on that cross. He suffered and died so you could be forgiven. And if you put your faith in what the Bible teaches, about that atonement at Calvary, you can receive salvation right now. And I want everyone here to pray this prayer with me tonight. Most of you here don't need to say this prayer, but there may be one or a few in our midst who do. And you watching in the audience tonight, agree in prayer, even though you may not need to say this prayer. Let's say it for the benefit of those who do. Say, oh God, I confess all of my sin before you, 
Forgive me, Lord, and I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe there is power in the divine blood of Jesus, power that washes away all of my sin. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, dear Jesus. And amen. And friend, if you meant that prayer, Jesus, he's yours. And you can have that miracle, that healing that you need. Jesus said in Mark's Gospel 16, not only that his gospel is to be preached to every creature in the world, but that signs would follow his believers. Friend, I'm the Lord's believer, agreeing with you in prayer. And Jesus said that a believer would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. They will recover. Now, friend, as a form of laying on of hands, put your hand against mine on the screen. And you who put in your request tonight, throughout the service, put your hand against mine on the screen. It may be you. You may be standing in for a friend or a loved one. Let your measure of faith work with my measure to bring healing and deliverance to those who are in need. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the people before you now. God, do move for their need. Lay a healing hand upon each one. Lord, your son paid the price at the whipping post. With his blood stripes, we were healed. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal. Heal, heal. Let that virtue flow to each one now. Lord, make them well. Make them whole for your honor, for your glory. In the blood name of Jesus, and amen. And friend, watch every sign of improvement as you get well, as you recover, and give the Lord the praise, the honor, and glory. Let your light shine so others may glorify our Father in heaven. Let us know what God has done for you. And you who need the Holy Ghost, it's promised in the Word of God. The Holy Ghost is a gift, and God will give it to those who have received the gift of salvation. So if you're watching and you have the gift of salvation, you're pure, clean, and holy, you can receive this gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the Word of God. You can be baptized tonight. Only believe, Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. And I want everyone here tonight to stand to your feet in this congregation. And I'm going to call the anointing down upon you to bless you, those of you who have the Holy Ghost. And those of you who do not have the Holy Ghost and you want the baptism, go to my left and your right to the invalid section. We have altar workers over there. And those of you who are in need of prayer in this auditorium, Tell an usher, and they'll assist you in receiving prayer tonight. But you in the audience, you don't have the Holy Ghost. We've had testimonies again and again, people letting us know that during these altar services, they have gone through to the Holy Ghost. They have been baptized in the Holy Ghost wherever they were, in their home or wherever it was. Friend, you can too. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call this anointing down upon this people tonight. And friends, start praising the Lord. Start praising Him and glorifying Him. Give your tongue over as you praise the Lord. Praise Him with your whole heart, your mind. Praise Him in your tongue. Praise Him in your language. Glory, glory, glory. Glorifying Jesus. And as those glories go up before the throne of grace, the Holy Ghost will move in. The Holy Ghost will come. And when he does, friend, you just open. You just yield yourself to him. And when he comes in and baptizes you, he will take over and he will speak through you in another language. He will give the utterance using your tongue, signifying he has come. In the name of Jesus, receive ye the Holy Ghost. I call this anointing down. Oh, and those of you that agreed with me in prayer today, friend, I'm going to continue to take you before the throne of grace 
believing that God meet your need, whatever it may be. And when God does move for you, we love to hear about it. You can send us your testimony. In fact, friend, if this Jesus ministry has been a blessing to you, if you enjoy the program and all that we offer through this Jesus ministry, let us know about it. We love to hear your feedback. You can send us your testimony by email. Send it to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And friend, if you have a special prayer request, I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook. Send in that prayer request and we will be agreeing with you in prayer. It's wonderful that any time of the day or night you can send in that request to our Facebook page and we will be believing, praying for you, expecting God to meet your need. Oh, friend, no one has ever loved you like Jesus loves you. No one has ever cared for you like he cares for you. And the Lord stands ready to meet your need. Jesus said, only believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. And I would like to invite you to be with us in our services. Come pay us a visit. We welcome visitors to our services all the time. Every weekend, we have the Friday night service at 7 p.m. Good music and singing by different performers, the word of God being preached. And friend, if you're in need of prayer, you can let an usher know and they will assist you in receiving prayer. Then Sunday, we have two services, the Sunday morning worship service at 10 a.m. Again, with more good music and singing, the word of God being preached. And if you're in need of prayer, you can receive it. And then Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we have a wonderful service with more music and singing and a variety of things that we do on Sunday evenings to bless the people. We look forward to seeing you next week on the program. God bless. Every Friday on the Ernest Angley Ministries Facebook page, we invite the nations of the world to send in their prayer requests, and we cover them with prayer during our Friday night miracle service. People are responding by the thousands with great testimonies of blessing and deliverance. Need a job? Post a message. Have a sick child? Post a message. In despair? Post a message. Seeking the divine will of God? Battling drugs and alcohol? Remember, Jesus said all things are possible to him that believe it. Claim your miracle by joining us in prayer and then send us your praise report with a comment. It is that simple if you believe.